Hello everyone, myself Dr. Abhishek Kumar, I am Associate Professor at the Department of Civil Engineering IIT Guwahati. This particular course which we will be talking in terms of Applied Seismology for Engineers is to give you, give you an overview about why earthquakes are happening across the globe, what are the different kinds of way which will come into existence as far as the earthquake occurrence is concerned. Then we will be also discussing how the source that is the fault plane, it is inducing earthquake and these vibrations are successively getting modified between the focus along the propagation path once it reaches to the particular site. Then how this information can be utilized in terms of hazard assessment. Overall, the course has been divided into 30 lectures. These are the content of different lectures. So, lecture 1 to 4 will talk about plate tectonics, continental drift theory and also give an understanding about what are seismic gaps, what are the important seismic gaps present across the globe, which are potential location for future earthquakes, mainly about great earthquakes. We will also discuss about the analogy for active and inactive faults present in a particular region. Then when we discuss about earthquake occurrence, different kinds of waves come into picture, primarily about surface wave as well as body waves. So, how the waves will get attenuated between the source where the earthquake has happened to the site where the earthquake induced damages have been experienced during a particular earthquake. So, that will come under ground motion attenuation. Then we will discuss about ground motion characteristics, what are the properties of the ground motion which will help us in understanding about the ground motion, the given ground motion which is generated during a particular earthquake and at a particular site. Then whenever we are going for hazard analysis, we have to prepare an earthquake catalog which will take care of all the earthquake which has happened in the past or most of the earthquake which are known to us in terms of past earthquake, historic earthquake or in terms of damages which has produced during pre previous earthquakes. So, how this can be used for source characterization as well as preparation of earthquake catalog, removing dependent events, removing repeated events that we will discuss between lecture 5 to 10. Lecture 11 to 13, we will discuss about how the earthquake catalog, which is an indication of how different magnitude earthquakes have happened in the past, can be used for quantification of hazard value. That means, how much earthquake loading, potentially a building and infra other kind of infrastructure will be exposed to during a particular design life. So, we will go with deterministic as well as probabilistic hazard analysis. In detail, we will have discussion on both the methods. Sometime there is linear source which is responsible for earthquake occurrence. Many a times the distribution of past earthquake information as well as information about active faults are such that we have to go with aerial source also. So, what is what is aerial source and how that can be used for seismic hazard analysis we will discuss in lecture 11 to 13. While going with hazard analysis we will also see how one can develop response spectra as well as uniform hazard spectra for a particular site considering the seismicity of nearby region. Many a times we will be uh, the ground motion which are generating or reaching at a particular site of interest will get modified also. So, how this will get modified by local soil we will discuss in terms of one dimensional equation of motion primarily for P wave that is primary wave as well as for secondary wave how one can obtain the solution of these and how the solution of one dimensional equation of motion can be used to find out how the soil layers available at different different depths beneath the ground surface altering the ground motion characteristics. Finally, this altered ground motion reached to the site of interest, thus responsible for earthquake induced loading which will be transferred to the building as well as the stability of your foundation medium. The last uh, uh, part that is lecture 22. 30, we will be discussing about liquefaction potential, how one can understand the initiation of liquefaction as far as critical state uh, of a particular soil is concerned. Then we will discuss about landslide, landslide classification. Most of the time, we are also going whenever uh, uh, it is intended to go for design of smart cities, we go with seismic microzonation practice that will help in identifying location which are relatively uh, less potential in terms of earthquake hazard and what are more potential. So, we can decide what are the important location which can be kept like relief camps, hospitals and schools which can be used in case there is a disaster happening at a site. 
and what are the location which can be kept even at relatively low hazard values or relatively high hazard values. So, microzonation practice it is it is quite important nowadays for uh, smart city planning as well as for retrofitting of existing infrastructure. The last part is seismic vulnerability. So, whenever we uh, as a common man whenever we hear about earthquake mostly it will be in terms of so many damages building damages which has happened during a particular earthquake or so many casualties fatalities which have happened during a particular earthquake. So, starting with why earthquakes are happening, what are the active faults, then going with how the vibration generated at the source is getting transferred with successful modification to the site of interest and how this is interacting with local soil available. Finally, the modified ground motion after a number of uh, revisions are getting uh, are hitting the particular infrastructure. If the infrastructure is not properly designed, then it will undergo maybe minor cracks, it may undergo maybe severe cracks or it may undergo complete collapse that will come under the vulnerability studies. Thirdly, if uh, depending upon the intended use of a particular infrastructure, definitely people who are using that particular infrastructure, their life is also at risk. So, how to go with risk assessment, we will give an overview. Over all this particular course is designed in such a way that it will give a broader understanding about earthquake occurrence and how if, if one is interested to know further about how earthquake occurrence can be used quantitatively to find out earthquake loading, this is the course you can refer to. Similarly, if one can inter one is interested to find out design response factor at a particular site of interest, still you can utilize it. If one is interested to find out the liquefaction potential of a site, this course is going an overview and continuing it for microzonation practice, seismic vulnerability and risk studies. So, overall the course is designed in such a way, both uh, uh, stud students studying at undergrad level, post graduation level or PhD can get benefited. This course will also benefit field engineers who are working on different problems related to earthquake occurrence and how the outcome from these understanding will be utilized for design, for retrofitting, for ground improvement work at actual site of interest. So, thank you everyone and uh, I hope this course will be useful to many of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.